Sometimes the truth can be stranger than fiction. Five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead inside the posh $200,000 home in the hills overlooking Los Angeles. But sometimes fiction can ring truer than fact. Modern screenplays are increasingly mixing fact with fiction in fascinating ways. Why does it got so many colors in it, man? What is this? Kevin Garnett is an actual NBA All-Star. Garnett with a tough baseline turnaround jumper. That's my man! But Howard is fictional. This is Charlie Kaufman. Charlie is real. And his twin brother, Donald, is not. Ah, oh, sing with me! Sharon Tate is a real actress. Rick and Cliff are 100% Tarantino. All of them illustrate the unique power a screenwriter has to bend, break, or rewrite the rules of reality, leaving viewers with something completely unexpected. What the f Great screenwriters see fact and fiction as elements of style. That's because they treat the truth like a bomb. Alfred Hitchcock had a lesson about bombs. Four people are sitting around a table, very dull. Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. Well, the whole emotion of the audience is totally different. When a writer plants a bomb, in this case, real people or a true story, Man. inside a work of fiction, the viewer is held captive throughout the film, locked in with a simple question. Will this story end the same way it did in real life? Or differently? With our screenplays and studio binder, we can see how these writers built compelling fictions atop a foundation of truth. KJ, huh? Back him down, back him down. Double. Boom! Fuck you! Yes! That's it, that's it. In some cases, historical events can be nested inside scripted drama. This is what's known as docufiction. One such story is Uncut Gems. In Josh and Benny Safdie's script, True events from Kevin Garnett's life and fictitious events from Howard's converge in the same narrative. KG becomes obsessed with the shimmering gem. This is our scripted scenario. It's got so many colors in it, man. What is this? That's the thing. They say you can see the whole universe in Opal. That's how fucking old they are. Holy shit. Notice how the Safdie brothers insert photographs from KG's real life. Wait, That's a sign. I need this. Uh, I need that. That's that. Uh, what? Like you understand that? that? Howard lends KG the opal, and that's what fuels his success. KG having fun. But it serves a practical purpose too. It propels the plot. I want Garnett points and rebounds. Right. Garnett block shots. Right. Celtics opening tip. The script establishes a cause and effect between KG's real life performance and Howard's fictional gambling addiction. God damn it! I have every intention of paying you back. I'm broke right now. You're broke? What's that one? Look at that! It ramps up our anxiety as we watch him make catastrophic decisions. Come on, KG, this is no different than that. This is me, all right? I'm not a fucking athlete. This is my fucking way. This is how I win, all right? Let's fucking bet on this. Let's bet on this shit. I'm fucking gonna bet all this money on you tonight, KG. The docufiction approach can add a texture of realism to your film's look and feel. You got the jam. Feel that fucking jam. <laughs> but its rigid parameters tied to real life events also encourage inventive storytelling. It can push you to craft a more character driven story. Oh my God! Yeah! There's a bump. I'm starting to sweat. And stop sweating. I've got to stop sweating. Imagine me and you. I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love. In a meta memoir, a writer can narrate their own true story with the help of creative license. 
This is Charlie Kaufman. The real Charlie wrote Adaptation. The film's protagonist is a fictionalized version of himself. Charlie Kaufman, fat, bald, repulsive, old, sits in a and includes a completely fabricated twin brother, Donald. There are no rules, Donald. Oh. In reality, Kaufman was hired to adapt Susan Orlean's book, The Orchid Thief, but struggled with writer's block. To begin, how to start? I'm hungry. I should get coffee. His fictional twin brother, Donald, exists to help us understand the real Charlie and his tortured creative process. Off to the book jacket photo of Susan Orlean. Clark, what do you want? Donald is a disruptor and the ultimate foil. He's also a screenwriter, but a more composed, confident one who can finish what he starts. I finished my script. I'm done. We learn that Charlie's conversation with Donald is a conversation with himself and his very real insecurities. I'm insane. I'm Earl Bros. I don't know what that word means. I've written myself into my screenplay. That's kind of weird, huh? It's self-indulgent. It's narcissistic. It's solipsistic. It's pathetic. I'm pathetic. I'm fat and pathetic. I'm sure you had good reasons, Charles. You're an artist. The reason is because I'm too timid to speak to the woman who wrote the book. Because I'm pathetic. Because I have no idea how to write. Because I can't make flowers fascinating. Because I suck. Am I in the script? By the way, Charlie never successfully adapted The Orchid Thief. He's desperate to finish this project and he doesn't know how to do it. To me, that's kind of the tragedy of the screenplay that never was able to uh, reach the, the fruition that, that Charlie had hoped. The meta-memoir approach values emotional honesty over factual accuracy. I wonder who's gonna play me. Someone not too fat. By allowing audiences to access your process, their connection to the material can be more personal. Okay, so maybe you do want to change certain true events. Well. Where history goes one way, your story goes another. This is revisionist history. This is an approach Quentin Tarantino has taken. In Inglorious Bastards, he guns down Hitler and Goebbels in a movie theater. And in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, our bomb under the table is Sharon Tate's tragic death. In a scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird religious rite, five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead. Miss Tate, who starred in Valley of the Dolls, was eight months pregnant. Our dread grows as we inch closer towards the night she was murdered. But in this alternate universe, her murderers meet Rick and Cliff before they can get to Sharon in the house next door. Uh, you are... Tarantino's dialogue includes the exact words Tex Watson spoke on the night of the real murders. I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. No, I was dumber than that. Something like Rex. But when Cliff mocks Tex, he robs these words of their power, and then he and Rick take things into their own hands. <laughs> Had Tarantino stuck to historical accuracy, we'd sit idly by as Sharon met her demise. But his playful use of irony makes us willful participants in this cathartic revenge. When we went and saw the match, you know, the big be quiet, the big shut up, you know? Writing a true story with a twist can be risky business. But those who try this technique may reap enormous creative benefits. A clever command of tone, and a crafty way to misdirect your audience. After all, movies are all about what if. Ready to start writing your own true-ish story? 
Studio Binder's free screenwriting software can help you blur the lines. Hit subscribe and enable notifications to keep them coming. See you in the next one.